Tell me about this place. Where are you? I'm in a garden. I'm in a garden. Very good. Tell me more. And there are lots of beautiful tall plants and birds flying around. And the eyes, sunshine and beautiful breeze, warm breeze. And I feel very connected to the plants and the birds. Mm -hmm. And in this place, as you observe this beautiful garden, do you feel like you have a physical body there? Yes. Take a look at this body and tell me what it looks like. Uh, I'm a woman, young woman. Mm -hmm. I have blonde hair. How old are you? Uh, maybe around 18. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. What do you, what do you look like? Um, I'm actually very pretty. Mm -hmm. And I have on a long dress with an apron. And what is it that you're doing in this garden today? Uh, I'm, I I'm always like to go and talk to the plants mm -hmm. and the animals. So let's find out what this day is about. What are you sharing with your the plants and animals today? That I don't like to be, I don't really like planet Earth, mm -hmm. but I do love the plants and the animals. So I'd like for you to connect mind to mind, soul to soul with these, with these conscious beings and yeah. tell me what they tell you. The birds say, we are here for you and we'll, we will always love you and try to protect you. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Happy, but I know they can't. Mm -hmm. Connect with the plants and see what the plants tell you. The plants say, even if you can't run away, like, you're still safe, just like we're rooted in the ground and we're safe. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Uh, a little better, but not much. Mm -hmm. So let's find out where all of this comes from. Let's find out why you decided to come and incarnate. I'm going to take you back in time and space find out why you made the decision to come as this woman. I'm going to count from one, five back to one, and when I get to number one, you will be at that place of making that decision. Five, going back in time. Four, three, two, and one. Be there now. I don't really want to be on Earth. Mm -hmm. Where I'm, are you? I'm in the cosmos. Mm -hmm. Look around you and describe where this place is. It's like <clears throat> it's like a room of light, but there are no walls. Mm -hmm. A room of light. Who's in there with you? I'm talking to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. What are you discussing today? That I have to go back. Why is it that you need to go back? 
Um, so I have, it's my assignment to be on earth. Mm-hmm. And I'm begging him not to send me. Why is Jesus needing to send you back to earth? Mm. Because the planet needs help. And there's so much to heal. Mm -hmm. So what is it about you, your soul? What do you specialize in that planet Earth needs this time? Mm, Healing energy. Just Mm -hmm. being, just, you know, having a certain energy. What does your energy, your soul's energy, do to heal? It radiates Mm -hmm. light, healing. Why is that needed on Earth? Mm, Because people have closed their hearts. Mm -hmm. What What has caused them to close their hearts? Uh seems to be some kind of dark force. Mm -hmm. Take a look and see. What does it look like? It's like a big mass. Mm -hmm. Blackness. Can you identify it even more? Where does it come from? Uh, Well, I don't know if it comes from people's hearts Mm -hmm. or if it's created because people's hearts close. Mm -hmm. But it's some. But because people's hearts are closed, it's dark. Mm -hmm. So this that you're watching. Do you watch it from the cosmos? Yeah, and I've been to earth many times. Mm -hmm. And each time you've been to earth, what have you been doing there? Healing work. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that some of these lifetimes have it ended in a very nice way. Yeah, I don't really like human beings. Mm -hmm. So why is it that it's important for you to come back at this time? Ah, uh, because Jesus says we need as many beings on the planet to shine their light. Okay. So since you're talking with Jesus, I want to know a little bit about your soul, about your essence. What is important about you? What is important about your essence? What is your superpower? Jesus says it's important. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, that I have a light of high frequency. Ah, very good. And I can talk to plants. I mean, I can talk to Gaia. Mm-hmm. So these are your specialties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In this high frequency energy, what happens when the soul is near other people? What does it do to other people, to the humans? Uh, well. It shines out energy, but other people can't always feel it Mm -hmm. or sense it if their hearts are closed. Mm. So is there a way that as you affect people to open up their hearts? Mm. Well, I'm trying, but I feel like People get pretty angry. Mm-hmm. 
because they don't understand. They don't understand. So let's find out more about your connection with Jesus. I'd like for you to converse a little bit more, and let's find out what it is that you're supposed to be doing in this next incarnation on Earth. Mm -hmm. He says this time will be better. Mm -hmm. In what way? That I won't be tortured. Mm -hmm. What was the reason why you needed to be tortured in all those other lifetimes? <clears throat> uh, um, because people could sense my energy, but they didn't understand it, mm -hmm. or they didn't understand what I was doing with my energy, mm -hmm. and it frightened them, and so they had to get rid of me. Mm -hmm. And each time that they got rid of you, mm -hmm. did you go back to this room? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how can this soul connect with this Christ consciousness without having to return to this room? How can she connect? Mm -hmm. Through a light beam. Mm -hmm. Show her that light beam now. Mm -hmm. How does she act to access this light beam? Uh, through her, it's in her heart, mm -hmm. and she can. Uh, she she even closed it off a lot, mm -hmm. but now it's open, and so she can just keep. Keep it, keep her heart open, and it, that will allow the connection. Very good. So I'd like for you now to expand that mm -hmm. beam even more. Make it more powerful. Mm -hmm. Does this beam have a color? Uh, yeah, it's, it's almost like a white, gold, white. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'd like for you to reinforce this light beam now. Yeah. And let's connect. And I'd like to ask how it is that she can then receive some of these downloads in mathematical formulas for healing, for upgrading DNA. Where is this? information stored. Uh, in her third eye. A third eye, very good. So let's find out why it is that she cannot receive as much information as she wants to. Let's take a look at her third eye and see if there's anything blocked there. Um, well, she told you that she's been told all this, uh, there's just all this stuff in her body mm -hmm. is gunking up. What but is this it, stuff gunking up? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's pain. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's do a scan of her body now and let's find out where this mm -hmm. pain is located. Do a scan, let's see where the first pain is located. Where is it? You can see shadows. You can see movements. Where is this pain? Mm, her stomach. All right. So I'd like for you to take a look at that stomach and see what it looks like. What is this? associated with. It's like there's a giant nail. A giant nail, all right. Is this giant nail something that she put in there or was put in there? Yes, it was put in there. All right, so let's find out the origin of this nail. I'd like for you now to begin focusing on that nail and mm. tell me what emotion is associated with this nail. 
for emotion. Uh, oh, uh, I, it's so... What's the word? It's so frightening and sad and despairing and... Mm -hmm. Please take it out. So let's find out. I'd like for you mm -hmm. to begin saying that same sentence, please take it out. Please take it out. And let's follow that sentence until we find out the story behind that nail. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Keep following it. Allow the images to come. Follow it so back. people... People who crucified Christ mm -hmm. decided they could use nails, mm -hmm. and for a woman, they just put it in my stomach because they thought that would be the most hurtful part. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to see as an observer. The lifetime where that nail was put into that stomach. See it as uh, an observer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm being held down and mm -hmm. put in jail. Mm -hmm. Now look, fun. look at the people who are holding you down. Look into their mm -hmm. eyes and see if you recognize any of those. The eyes of the window, the soul. Who do you recognize? Mm. Well, no one because they've, they're, they've lost their soul. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're vacant. They're vacant. Yeah. Very good. So let's find out who is manipulating them. Follow who it is that's manipulating them. It's an uh, anti... It's... Antichrist mm -hmm. person or people. It's just... It's an antichrist energy. Mm-hmm. And what is this antichrist energy doing to you? Why are they putting this nail in there? Uh, You'll know the answer. Take away my power. Take away the power. Very good. So when they take away the power of this woman, what does it do for them? Makes them feel more powerful. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand that it weakens them. Mm -hmm. Because anytime you hurt someone, you're weakening yourself. That's right. So I'd like for you now to take action and begin to use that energy that you have and begin to use that energy and send it into the hearts of these men. Allow that energy to fill them with Christ consciousness now. Each one of them. See what each one is filled with once you connect that light beam into their heart. It's hard for them because it's like a bright light mm -hmm. in their like when you shine a bright light in someone's eyes. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Keep sending it into them. Keep sending this bright light into their hearts, reminding them of who they are. Because even though they're vacant, each one still has the spark mm. of God. I'd like for you to remind them all of who they are using your beam. Expand that light within each one of their hearts. <laughs> and tell me what happens now as each one remembers who they are. Well, they feel great sadness and remorse, mm -hmm. and they're going to take the nail out. Very good. So allow them now to remove that nail. And I want you to use your intention to dissolve that nail, to 
dissolve it mm. to where it becomes powder in their hands. I know Jesus could do it. I don't feel as strong as Jesus. Mm -hmm. Connect yourself with that uh. being. <sighs> Connect yourself with a Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. And tell me what happens next. I feel like Jesus is saying, you can do it, you're strong enough, and I'm mm -hmm. saying, no, I'm not. Please help me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Connect now and do it. You have the power. <sighs> the the air, the dark energy is so strong. Mm -hmm. And you are connected directly to the source of the Christ uh, consciousness. You are tapped uh, in. <clears throat> Allow that energy to flow through you. Uh, you are the instrument of God. Allow the source uh, to flow through you. Uh, What's happening? Mm, it's painful. Mm -hmm. Tell me what's painful. Mm, yeah, the it's physical, but more emotional. Mm -hmm. So, have you removed that nail? Very mm, hard time. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get it out. All right. Uh, we'll just pull it out. Yeah, please help me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and use a rose quartz above your area here. And we're going to go ahead and put the light. Use the crystal. Mm -hmm. We're going to pull it out. Mm -hmm. Make a vortex. And as I use this vortex, we're going to pull it out. Pull it out. <clears throat> and tell me what's happening. It's coming out. Mm -hmm. and Allow that nail to be pulled out by the vortex of energy. And, oh, it's coming out mm -hmm. and I'm being showered with rose petals. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. How does that feel? Oh, better. Wonderful. So let's find out where that emotion was. That emotional pain that you had, where was that? In my stomach, in my heart. Mm -hmm. So which one? Hurts the most right now. Oh my heart. Mm -hmm. So let's find out the origin of the emotion in your heart. Focus on that heart and see what's in there. Well, it just gets, it's sad mm -hmm. when people are hurtful. Mm -hmm. It's when people's hearts are closed and they Enjoy brutality. Mm -hmm. So what have you been doing every time you have seen sadness and brutality? What have you been doing with all of that? Uh, well, I often in different lives have people come to me for healings. Mm -hmm. Where have you put all of that set? Have you been storing it away? Have you been taking that sadness from others? Mm, yeah. Where are you putting it? Where have you stored all of this energy? Mm, my heart. Mm. So it seems to me that that heart must be very full. Mm. 
Take a look at that heart and tell me what that heart looks like from inside. Well, it's bright on the outside, but there's a big cast iron mm -hmm. case. And who has and put that cast iron case around your heart? Uh, who put that there? Boy, I did. Mm -hmm. So let's find out why. Are you keeping things in or keeping things out? What is this cast iron? It's like a storage case. Mm, storage case. So what do you imagine is inside that's so important? Well, you would think it would be awful things, but it actually isn't. All right, so let's dive into that heart, and I'd like for you to find a way into that heart. Let's dive in and see what you have hidden inside that cast iron heart. Ah, uh, it's full of butterflies. Mmm. Well, butterflies like to fly. Why are you keeping them captive? I'm upset that I have to spend so much time on Earth. Mm-hmm. I... So you have been keeping all of these butterflies hidden? Yeah, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. So let's connect with these butterflies. I'd like for you to connect mind to mind with the butterflies. And let's ask these butterflies what they would like. Oh, they want to be set free. Mm -hmm. And what will it take for you to open up that heart? What is keeping it sealed? Well, I think I would say, I would like to say to Jesus that <clears throat> I want to let, I'll let the butterflies go if he'll let me go, if he'll let me, I want to help him, mm -hmm. I want to, oh, so I don't like being in the heavy earth energy. Mm -hmm. So you've created your own heaviness in your heart mm. to trap butterflies that should be free? Are you like one of those butterflies that you've trapped yourself? Yeah, I'm so sorry to the butterflies. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to open up your heart and allow those butterflies to fly free? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to put my hand over your chest mm -hmm. and put on a the rose quartz on top of that heart. And let's begin to open that heart. Feel the mm -hmm. energy of the crystal as it begins to open up that heart and allow those butterflies to flutter free. Feel the sensation as they begin to fly. And tell me what it feels like. It feels good, and I'm really sorry to the butterflies. Mm -hmm. Can you forgive yourself yeah. for keeping them captive so long? Yeah, if they'll forgive me. All right, so I'd like for you to connect with those butterflies and ask them for forgiveness. Yeah, they understand. Very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand over your chest and I'd like for you to give me all of those feelings, mm -hmm. all of that sorrow of keeping those beautiful butterflies captive for so long. Give it all to me. Empty yourself of that guilt and sorrow of having had others suffer in your heart. And tell me when I have it all. I hope it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Keep giving it to me and tell me when you'll be done. Pull it all out. <sighs> Feel that sensation as it flows out. Flowing out. I love Earth. I love nature so much. Mm -hmm. 
very good. Tell me when I have it all. Uh, I, I hope you have it all. Mm -hmm. So let's take it and send it to the universe for healing. And now take a look at that heart and tell me what that heart looks like now. Uh, it's a little raw. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for Archangel Raphael to assist me now. And I'd like for him to put in his beautiful green healing light into your heart. Okay. I'd like for you to feel the sensation as he flows that healing light into your heart. And as he's doing that, I'd like to ask Jesus, how does her heart look now? For many lives, there weren't many people to help her. Mm -hmm. She had to do all the work. And what about this lifetime? In this lifetime, you're an angel that's helping. Mm -hmm. So how can we help Lori even more today, Jesus? She wants to help others. She's doing her work. But she wants to be more. She wants to help more. She hasn't been able to have a normal job. What was she sent here to do? What's her mission? Yeah, don't even bother with a normal job. Mm -hmm. Why is it that Lori has not been able to find a normal job? Because that's not... Wait. That's, that would be a waste of time. Mm -hmm. So where should Lori be focusing her life? Connecting with other angels mm -hmm. and doing her healing work. Mm -hmm. But how can she maintain her life here on Earth that is a financially based life? How can she support herself by just dealing with the angelic realm? Mm -hmm. How can she attract more money to herself? Uh, just shine her light brighter. Shine her light brighter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how does shining her light brighter get her more money? Mm. How does that work on Earth? Mm. Because it will connect her with more. Uh, it will help. It will connect her with more other, other healers, mm -hmm. and together they can do more work. Okay, good. Because she was asking if she could continue mm -hmm. developing her interdimensional energy healing. Is that where she's supposed to be focused on? Mm -hmm. But she still. She's still doing it in, uh, she's still kind of linear about it. Mm -hmm. Tell me more what that means. So, if she, as she opens up, it's like, it's like when she got she just got a download mm -hmm. of a green light but it's a quantum green light for healing so it when she plugs into the quantum energy it will just be more expansive it will be bigger and stronger and multi-dimensional and it's not it's so much more than she she can't even imagine it because it she's still being thinking to 3d mm -hmm. so when she yeah. connects with this quantum reality yeah, yeah like, different than than what it's we so have. it's so amazing mm -hmm. Step into the quantum light because 
its sound and color and vibration mm-hmm. all it's like the whole you can't even imagine how multidimensional it is it's all your, it's activating all your senses at once it's just it's not even imaginable with regular sight and sound so how does she step into this Mm. Ah, she's being shown. He just popped into the picture. Mm Mm-hmm. Is he part of it? Yeah, because she has to connect to some interdimensional beings to access the interdimensional energy. Mm -hmm. Now, does she know Z from a different lifetime? Do they work together? Hmm. It can't be a coincidence that this being has popped into her life. How do they know each other? Mm, Yeah, from in between Mm. lives in the cosmos. Mm-hmm. Would you be okay for her to connect with this in-between life in the cosmos now so that she can connect with Z and we can get back to you? Yeah, but she would first like to ask you mm-hmm. to do a little more healing. All right, very good. Well, can we ask then Z to step to the side? And just watch while we do some of this? Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So let's continue then and see if there's anything else in her body that we need to work on right now. What else do we see? Mm, There's like static Mm -hmm. energy. Tell me more. Where is the static? Oh, the whole body. The whole body. What's What's creating the static? Uh, Fear of people harming her. Mm -hmm. Now, is this this a fear that she created herself? Or is she picking up this fear? Oh, it's happened. It's happened. In this lifetime or other lifetimes? Other lifetimes. All right. So let's find out how it is that she is connected to these lifetimes does she have anything that's connecting her to those lifetimes that are keeping the static going, the sphere? Yeah, it's like a cord. Cord. Where is this cord located? Mm. In her stomach. In her stomach. Mm-hmm. How deep is this cord? Mm, deep. Deep. Very good. So Lori is a healer. And we're going to begin using now her own healing power to begin to sever this cord. She is holding selenite, Mm -hmm. which is excellent for cutting cords. I'd like for you to begin using your hands with the selenite to go deep into your stomach and begin to pull out those cords. Begin to sever them and cut them out. Tell me what you experience. They're coming out, but there's a hook at mm-hmm. the end. Mm-hmm. And why it's have like, you put a it's hook like a there? Fish hook. Mm-hmm. Why is there a fish hook there? So that no one will ever take it out. Ah. Well, we can do something even more interesting. We can dissolve that fish hook. Hmm. We already used some dissolving before. What can you use to dissolve this fish hook? What kind of light would help dissolve? Hmm. She wants you to go. Mm-hmm. She All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Archangel Michael, who has a blue flame sword, and I'm going to ask him to go ahead 
and cut that fish hook with his mm. blue flame sword. Mm. And as he does, that fish hook will dissolve in his flame. Mm. And you can now pull out that cord effortlessly. Mm. How does that feel as we pull this out? That's good. She needs to know mm -hmm. that another human can, can do this. Mm -hmm. That's right. And she needs to know that there are many who are there to help her simply by asking. So now tell me what the stomach looks like. It just needs a little healing. Very good. So I'm going to ask Archangel Raphael to step forward and send in that beautiful green healing light. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. And tell mm. me how that feels. Mm, it's nice. Very good. So what else? Take a look and see if that those cords have been dissolved. Mm. Anything connecting her to all of this static anymore? Well, there's also kind of like cobwebs mm -hmm. around. All right. And what are these cobwebs doing? Well, you know, they're kind of stringy and sticky. All right. So we can use something very quickly. I'm going to ask St. Germain to step forward and throw his beautiful violet flame over your entire body mm. and see what happens to all that cobweb with the violet flame. Yeah, it's melting. Mm -hmm. Very good. So as we're taking care of each and one of these cords and cobwebs, I want you to see what happens now to your energy field as it's cleared away all of this static. Uh, it's very colorful. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's like that multi dement It's like a, it's not a rainbow, it, but it's all the colors. Mm -hmm. Very good. And what are all these colors doing to this energy field? It, What's it do, do to them? It, allows them to vibrate at a lot of different frequencies at mm -hmm. once. Very good. And as Lori receives all of this vibration, all of this frequency, what is that doing to all of these downloads that she's received? Is that affecting them? Yeah, it's like it gives them it's like it gives them space mm -hmm. to, to, well, it's hard to explain visually, mm -hmm. but it's like now there's room for it because they were so big and now there's room for them. Kind of room for them to grow and expand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of like those butterflies that were locked in your heart. Yeah. Allowing them to now do their thing. Yeah. Mm hmm So let's open them up more and more. She wants to receive those downloads mm. of mathematical formulas for healing, for upgrading her DNA. So let's begin now. That connection. Where does she connect to receive that download? goes in through her third eye mm -hmm. and then it it swirls around her in the multi-dimensional colored light mm -hmm. and let's follow that and see if there's any blockages or anything holding them now from doing what they're here to do for her follow it and see They're 
swirling around. It's like her. It's like they're swirling in her aura. Mm, very good. But they're staying in mathematical order. Mm -hmm. So how can she now decipher these formulas? Mm. What is the key for unlocking mm. that knowledge? This is what she's looking for. It's a lot. It's soupy. Mm -hmm. It. She can't think about it. Mm -hmm. She has to feel it. All right. So go ahead and begin having her feel mm. her way through it. Yeah. It's like she's feeling her auric field. Mm -hmm. And when she feels it, then the formulas are embedded in it. Mm -hmm. And that allows them to activate. So as she goes from a three-dimensional way of thinking to a higher dimensional way of being, mm -hmm. show her. Yeah, it just, it's very, it's a more, it's, it's so much more natural mm -hmm. because when you try to turn your, when you think it's like you have to stop and turn on your brain and it's clunky, it's like your brain, it's like driving an old mm -hmm. clunker and when you connect into your multi-dimensional being, it's it's just the most beautiful flow. Mm -hmm. So now that she has experienced this, will she be mm. able to connect this on her own during her journeys, during her meditation? Yeah, if she, she needs to listen to this session recording. Mm -hmm. So she can tap in. Practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. And now that she knows about how to tap into this, how can she now help to mine her Akashic records? To tap into those skills from so many lifetimes. Even learn to play a musical instrument when she's interested in. Is this the same way of doing this or something else? Yeah, because there's more room mm -hmm. to access everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of state does she need to be in to get to this? Um, relaxed mm -hmm. and safe, feeling safe. Mm -hmm. So in the past, it seems that she did not feel safe. That was one of the things mm -hmm. that was holding her back. Even at the beginning of this session, she brought out that fear mm -hmm. once again. So have we cleared up the safety issue? Or is there somewhere else that we need to tap into? Well, still a lot of dark energy and you have to mm -hmm. be careful but the brighter you can shine your light the safer you'll be mm -hmm. and you can move more freely and the brighter you get the, the brighter you get mm -hmm. And and she's already been told she's not going to be persecuted in this lifetime. No. That all she has to do is shine her light and connect with that Christ consciousness. Yeah. And she's really good to go, isn't she? Yeah. Mm hmm Good. Is there something else that you would need to work on today? 
take a look at her body. Skin more and see if there's anything else in her body that we need to work on. Shine that beautiful light through her. And see how this is flowing through her now. Well, she, she, there's something still there. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Feels like it's in her back. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's now look for the origin of what's in her back. I'm going to count from five back to one. When I get to number one, I'll tap your forehead and you will see where this is in your back, what it is. Five, going back through time and space now, looking for the origin of what's in your back. Four. Three, two, and one. Oh. Be there now. What is that? Uh, it's an axe. An axe. All right, I'd like for you to follow the axe and see who is holding that axe. Who is it? Uh, I think it's a white man, mm -hmm. and I'm a black man. Mm -hmm. And who are you to him? I am a slave mm -hmm. that tried to escape. Are you male or female? Male. Mm -hmm. What is your name, please? Uh, Rasmus. Rasmus. Rasmus, are you attached to her, or is this one of your li her lives? One of her lives. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what it is that you're holding. Why are you holding this axe? It represents people who have an axe to grind with. Feeling, needing power. Mm -hmm. So by you keeping this axe in your back, it, it does it empower you? No, but it gives other people power. Why would you give away power? Uh, I feel like I don't deserve it. Ah. Why would you not deserve it? Because oh, I'm inferior. Rasmus, I want you to look inside your soul. Tell me how big that soul is. Yeah, it's big. Mm -hmm. And look at the soul of the one who gave you the axe. It's scrunched. Mm -hmm. Do you realize why he needed it? To cut you down. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that your soul, your power, was much bigger than his? Mm -hmm. Can you understand that what this man was doing he was trying to make himself more powerful, powerful by eliminating your power? Mm -hmm. Was he successful? Well, sort of. Come on. He got rid of your body. Did he get rid of your soul? No. No. So no one could cut down your power. No. So why would you continue to hold on to this axe, knowing full well of how powerful you are? I'm... Do you need that axe anymore? I don't want it. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you now to pull that axe out of your back now. Pull it out. Will you pull it out? Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to put my hands over your body, but you will put it and pull it out. You need to pull that out. Okay. I will give you my energy to guide you. See yourself pulling that axe out. Okay. Mm hmm And now? It's out. It's out. What would you like to do with that axe? I want to bury it. Mm-hmm. So nobody can use it. All right. So go ahead and begin digging a hole with that axe. And bury that axe and give it back to Mother Gaia. Yeah. So that she can dissolve it. Yeah. And bless it. Mm. And now, Rasmus, I'd like for you to send your energy into your back. Mm. And heal that energy. Mm. And tell me how that back feels. It feels better. Mm -hmm. And I'm no longer a slave. No longer a slave. But you still have not forgiven the man who has put the axe in you. Can you forgive this man, understanding that he didn't know any better, mm. that he was trying to take from you the power that he wanted? Mm -hmm. Can mm -hmm. you forgive him for mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Very good. And I'd like for you to connect with this soul. Mm -hmm. And tell me if he has forgiven you. Yes, he's sorry. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'd like for you now to disconnect from the lifetime of Lori. Disconnect. And allow yourself now to take a big breath in and bring in that beautiful green light as Archangel Raphael sends that light into your back completely filling that space with green light sealing it up and tell me how that back feels now much better much better very good so let's take another sweep of that body and see if there's anything else in that body we need to take care of today before we move on Okay, other things might surface. Mm -hmm. So as other things may surface, what would you recommend to Lori to do now that she understands that she is a healer? She has mm -hmm. this power. What can she do as other things begin to surface? She can go back into A hypnotic state and clear it. Mm -hmm. She can do it herself, can't she? Yeah, she likes to get help. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> can she help get help from Jesus? Mm hmm. Very good. Very good. Now she tells me that she'd like to do more writing and she's been thinking about a book on the relationship between food and healing. Is this a good idea? Or is there a better topic for her? This is a good idea because it will get into healing our food and Be a way to he yeah, it'll be a way to heal our bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something there. Mm -hmm. Well, she'd like to tap into that information now that we have that open line for her to connect mm -hmm. with that quantum field, because she's concerned about our water, our food, our air supply. She feels it's so con so contaminated. Even the organic food is has something on it. She wants to know if energy work is the best way to decontaminate the food in our environment. Can you give her more insight on this? Yeah, by, by using 
the multicultural, multi-dimensional light, mm -hmm. it can remove toxins. And that we will more and more learn how to, humans will learn how to access this light, which vibrates at a very high frequency that will allow us to begin to clean up mm -hmm. all the contamination that we've created. So this light We'll all learn how to tap into it, or certain people? Yeah, we'll all learn. Okay. When is that coming? Mm, so, as more people open up their hearts, because it begins with Christ Consciousness Light, and then from there, you can tap into this multi-dimensional light. Mm -hmm. So if people put out the intention, they can begin to access it. Very good. And that reminds me of some experiments that were done by Dr. Emoto about water. Mm -hmm. That he put some words under a glass of water, or label the water, and as people send messages to water, to plants, it seems that it affects them. Mm -hmm. The intention alone, is this what we're talking about? When mm -hmm. they open up their heart and send blessings to a water, mm -hmm. it changes it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a very powerful idea. Mm -hmm. that we haven't been using. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some indigenous people use it, mm -hmm. or did use it, but most of the world has lost it. Mm -hmm. So in the past, people were kept healthy solely on intent, intention? Mm -hmm. Much more so. Much more so than now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's happened to our health? She says that there are so many new tick-borne diseases emerging, and she doesn't blame Gaia for being ticked off with humans. But how can we spend more time in nature, for example, if we're under a threat of catching such a debilitating disease? What's happening there? Well, Gaia isn't vengeful, mm -hmm. but Gaia does need to teach us some lessons mm. about being more loving and caring. And if we, it's about heart connection to our environment. Mm -hmm. So if someone goes out into the woods, for example, and is not connected with nature, are they more susceptible to getting something like this? Yeah, and it's not just, it's not just about being fearful, it's about being closed-hearted, mm. uh, or um, just unconscious. Unconscious. When people are unconscious, they don't even realize that Gaia is conscious. Mm. So she knows if someone's heart is open or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gaia does, yes. Yes. So when you are in connection with Gaia, when you are in a love connection with her, with all those around you, how does that affect someone when they're going out into the woods, for example, in a, in a tick-infested place? Mm -hmm. 
Well, if they send love to the text, mm. the text will be loving back. Okay, very good. So we need to be loving with all of nature. Yeah, even ones that you fear, mm -hmm. if you send them love, they will send love back. Wonderful. Good. Now talking about sending love, is she connected with her innate? Not much. Yeah, she never, she used to not be, but she is now. Mm -hmm. So how does that affect her, talking with this, this consciousness of her body that keeps her healthy? Yeah, but she needs to go deeper. Mm -hmm. it, it's how can she go deeper into her innate? Well, we all need to talk to our innate. But it's not, it's more than a conversation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a sense of oneness. So you have to be at one with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can't be at war with your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we look at our body, for example, we say we're not happy with our weight. We're not happy with the wrinkles, we're not happy with our gray hair, with our fingernails, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Is that part of it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happens when we talk to our body like that? Well, we don't, people, most people understand about talking lovingly to a child mm -hmm. or a pet. Not all people, but a lot of people. And we need to talk to our own bodies and our innate and nature. We need, we need to talk, communicate with, with grace and compassion. Mm -hmm. Is she connected with her innate? Yes, and she, she'll go deeper when she's connecting into the multi-dimensional light while she's doing it. Okay, so while she's receiving that, or walking into that light, will she be able to get more accurate answers about her health and healing? Mm -hmm. Okay, good, very good. What's going on with those muscles by her left breast area? They seem to be twinging a little bit. Mm. What's going on there? Yeah, they're pulling. Mm -hmm. yep. What's going on? Why are they pulling? It's like pulling on your heart, pulling on your heart strings. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what's pulling on them. What's mm. the message there? Like, pay more attention. Mm hmm Pay more attention to your heart. Now, she's been wanting more love in her, in her life. She'd like to find her soulmate, a companion she could spend her life with. Mm hmm Is her body reminding her, pulling on her heartstrings? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because she tries to just be comfortable on her own. Mm -hmm. Is that working? Mm, well, sort of, but not totally. Mm -hmm. So she can be very independent and it's okay, but it could be better if she had a heart partner, mm -hmm. but she's maybe with the maybe letting the butterflies free will help. Mm -hmm. Good. So does she now that she does not have that iron cast heart anymore? Will she allow someone to love her? 
Oh yeah, because now the butterflies are out. They're kind of almost doing a reconnaissance for her. Mm -hmm. Are they looking out there for someone? Yeah. That could fill that little space? Yeah. Very good. Very good. What about her teeth? What's going on with her teeth? She's had a lot of work done. Mm -hmm. What is the message she's getting there? Oh, it's about... It's all the... Well, it's just so much tenseness. So, it's just... It's all the... Uh, so many painful situations. Mm -hmm. Why has she needed to go through these painful situations? Well, in each lifetime, to, her job was to do as much healing as she could, but it's just that, you know, sooner or later there would be just too, a dark force would come together and snuff her out for that lifetime, but mm -hmm. then she'd come back. Mm -hmm. But, and it's just, it's, uh, it's just what needed to be done. It's just part of the opening up the earth to, to greater light, but it just takes time and energy, and mm -hmm. she just had to keep coming back and help chipping away. Well, let's find out if her teeth have anything to do with any lifetime. Mm. Take her back. I'm going to count from five to one when I get to number one. I'm just going to tap that forehead, and you will see the images of that lifetime associated with the teeth. Five, mm. going back in time now, through time and space. Four, looking for the lifetime that affected the teeth. Three, two, and one. Be there now. Oh, Allow she, the images to come. She's getting her, some, someone's pulling some of her teeth. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the face. Who's yeah. associated with this? Mm -hmm. Someone very scary. Mm -hmm. Who is this person in relation to her? Well, she's met him in a few lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I think she's not, in this lifetime her vibration is too high to mm -hmm. connect. Mm -hmm. So why is she holding on to this memory? What is she associating that with? Mm. Find out why her teeth are being taken. It's punishment. Mm -hmm. Let's follow the punishment. What is she being punished for? Boy, what happened? Allow the images to come. Ah, uh, well, she was a man. Mm -hmm. And she tried to do a healing on someone, and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And the person died. And who was this person that died? Was it a per person of importance? Mm. And the person Sort of it came to be healed secretly, mm -hmm. but then some people found out, and then the person died. Mm -hmm. But the person died because the people who found out that this other person was sneaking to get healing, mm -hmm. they actually poisoned him. Mm -hmm. Just to prove. And then blamed it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why is she being reminded of that lifetime? Um, yeah, it's... Well, it makes her frightened to do to to do strong healing. It makes her frightened that people will be afraid of her healing work. Mm-hmm. So I'd like for you to connect with that man that died in your care. Mm. I'd like for you to connect with him. And let's find out what karmic connection you had with him. Mm. What was the reason that this happened? Well, it seems like in a previous life they were a man and a woman, and then, but it was the man who died had felt unrequited love mm-hmm. and. So even though he was trying to get healing, it just somehow then the people found out and poisoned him to blame me, Mm -hmm. the person in that lifetime. It's kind of confusing, Mm -hmm. you know, but it's about, it was about unrequited love. And then it took, then it's also about people. It makes Lori afraid that people will accuse her of things. Mm-hmm. But that the faults of doing, of hurting people mm-hmm. in the healing part. So now that we understand this lifetime, is there anything for Lori to fear in this lifetime? Mm. Will she have her teeth pulled out? Well, she did. Mm -hmm. Will she have her teeth pulled out for punishment? So why somehow? Let's find out who this man is. Is this Mm. man part of Lori's life? See if there's connect with the soul and see if you recognize that soul. Is this someone in her life? I'm asking Jesus why I had to be reminded. Mm -hmm. It's just about just about humility and healing. Mm something like that so I'd like for you to be able to tap into that information so you know it in your heart well it's it, it's almost it's about being it's about humility mm-hmm. but uh, also commitment to t- always doing the best no matter, even if people feel afraid or feel distrust. Mm -hmm. But to do it with confidence and humility. Very good. Good. So now that she understands this, I'd like for you to show her how she can use that experience to help her in her journey. How can this experience, this painful experience, be used as a strength? Mm. It's about... It's not... Boy, somehow it's just a reminder. It's not, she, when she had lost some teeth, it wasn't 
punishment, but it was a reminder. All right. It's a reminder to be humble. Confident and there humble, you go. which is a special mix. Good. Yeah. Does she need to be connected with that lifetime any longer? No. All right. So I'd like for you now to disconnect that life. Okay. Cut the cord and allow that life to drift away like a boat away mm -hmm. from a pier that's been let go. See it drifting out. And now that she understands that she came here with this knowledge, with this ability to connect, she can move forward now in life with that confidence and also being humble. Mm -hmm. Good. So now that we know that this is what happened in the life, are there any other directions that she should focus on in her professional work? Because she's thinking about registering for hypnosis training, introspective hypnosis. Is this mm -hmm. a good direction for her? Well, anyone who gets to study with you is very, will be very lucky. Well, thank you. Is there a way that she can combine hypnosis with her shamanic journeying and spiritual readings? Yeah, it's, it might seem like they contradict or contrast, mm -hmm. but there actually is a way because if two, just like you sync up with people and mm -hmm. if someone can be there in the journey to get, if two people can be together, mm -hmm in the journey that can bring so much more healing mm -hmm. it can be very powerful so she understands that by this experience that she's had today in which i am go going with her on this journey mm -hmm. instead of just facilitating it but i am going deep in with her mm -hmm. she can be doing the same for others mm -hmm. with her abilities and her healing mm -hmm. very good very good. You know, she wants to talk about her house. Mm -hmm. She loves it. Mm -hmm. It came to her. She loves the spirits in the house. Mm -hmm. But she wants to know whether she should sell it or move to a less expensive home in Maine or another place. Mm -hmm. Well, the house really loves her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Has she lived on that land before? Mm-hmm. She may, she's either lived on that land or lived with the spirits mm. that are now on that All land. All right. So let's shine a light on that. Mm. Shine a light on that and see mm. which one is true. Who are these spirits that have called her to that house? How does she know them? Have these been human or have these been others? Yes, these are... Native Americans, mm -hmm. and she has been very, very connected to them. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily right on that spot, but they, but then in other lives, they've been connected to that spot, and so then they've connected her mm -hmm. in this lifetime to that spot. But she has asked them to support her when she needs to leave and that she promised that she would ask to continue to connect with their energy and they're okay with that. Well, it seems to me that she's making an attachment to these Native Americans. Are these Native Americans are they in the light, or are they attached to the land? Uh, no, they are in the light. Okay. So being in the light, it's okay to do that. Yeah. So she has to continue to ask for their support, mm -hmm. and they will support her. And 
she other I mean Gaia will support her to be where she needs to be mm-hmm. does she need to be in Maine no she was told that she should be going to a warmer climate yeah she doesn't need to be in Maine mm-hmm. <laughs> so what would be the best place for her mm-hmm. sort of mid-atlantic mid-atlantic okay I'd like for you to show her a map and circle the area in which would be best for her. Okay, the Carolinas. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Very good. And I know that in the Carolinas there are Native Americans there too. Would they allow her to live on the land? Mm, yes, they would uh, love to have her live on their land. Very good. Very good. So let's make that connection now. Mm. I'd like for you to reach out and allow your spirits from your existing home to send out a spiritual telegram to these in your new area so that when it's the right time and the right place, they will also call you to the right home. Mm. Okay. Very good. Very good. How can she support more relationships with animals? Mm. Well, she really does in her journey work. Mm -hmm. And even though she can't be with animals in the physical realm very much, Mm -hmm. she'd like to, she'd like to be out in the African savanna with elephants. She'd like to be in the ocean with dolphins. She'd like to be in the forest with chimpanzees. She would like to be everywhere with the animals. Mm -hmm. And but she's really here more to work with people. Mm -hmm. But she can be with the animal spirits. She can she can just go and in, into the spirit world with the animals and that's just as powerful very good which are the spirit animals that work with her please mm. uh yeah chimpanzees and dolphins are really special okay very good i need to share this message mm-hmm that there are many elderly people right now who really need support opening their hearts even in their final moments because it will make their transition so much easier and allow them so much opportunity when they come back so it's very important to help even people older people or people in their last days they're actually very important a very important group of people to help Mm-hmm. and support and so how can we help these people in their last moments what can we do yeah um do we need to be there with them well yeah mm-hmm. what, what do we need to do when we have someone in their final moments their final days to be by their side offer them blessings And especially when people are getting near transition, they tend to soften. And it's really a special time, a 
sharing heart energy. It's like babies and people in their last days. Those, their, their hearts are so tender. Mm -hmm. It's a very loving time to offer blessings and love and compassion. And with older people, they may have a lot of regrets and to help them understand and work through those regrets to, to understand their, their experience and their lessons that they've learned. And um, wow, it's like I can just see now, it's, I can visual, it's like every time a soul passes, it's like this huge burst of light that showers down on the earth. So every time we can support someone to open their heart and shine their light brighter, oh my gosh, it's like, it's like giant firecrackers in the sky. So the more you can help someone in their final moments, those fire, you know, it's just bigger, bigger <laughs> firecrackers that rain down on the rest of us that are still alive. Oh my gosh, I, it's so important. Mm -hmm. we, it's so important to help people in their final, final moments. And what if we fail to do that? Can we still help them? Oh, well, we can still send them love mm -hmm. from anywhere. Okay. Yeah. And when we send them love, usually when we lose a loved one, we're usually in grief. We're usually very sad. Mm -hmm. How can we help them in that moment of grief? Mm. to help them understand that their loved one is now in a pa place of peace, mm -hmm. pa no more pain, mm -hmm. and they are in a place where their soul can expand even more, and, and to know, remind people that they may Will re they will reconnect either on the other side or in the next lifetime. Mm -hmm. That if it that the connection once a connection is made, it's never lost unless someone chooses to cut the cord. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you very much for that very important message. Oh, but it's like the sky is just lit up it's so lit up i mean there are people, a lot of people passing but oh my gosh their energy when people cross over the it's it's explosive mm. amazing wow <laughs> so how can Lori use that information now to help her even more in her practice mm. to find ways to reach out to more people I mean, everyone on the planet needs some healing and support. Mm -hmm. Just like healers need just some need even more healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all have to support each other. But oh, there's yeah, it's almost maybe somehow reaching out to more people who are getting ready to cross over. Hospice is a beautiful program. Mm -hmm. More, so more programs like that that offer energy support and healing during people's transmissions, it, transitions. It's like when shamans do psychopomp to help people cross over, but this is this is much bigger. Yeah. Very good. 
Very good. Thank you. Now, when we first started this session, mm -hmm. we found this soul in a garden. Mm -hmm. And then, understanding that she didn't want to be on this earth. Mm -hmm. And now that she's had this session, she understands the reason why she's here on this earth, the energy that she is bringing forth. How can you console her in this knowledge that she doesn't want to be here? Well, she feels so much better. Mm -hmm. She feels she feels much safer in the garden and she feels that before she felt like she was escaping to the garden until she was pulled back into a hard, cruel life. Mm -hmm. And now she feels like she can stay in the garden, that this is, that she can be on earth and she can stay in the garden. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. So we've done a wonderful work on the soul today. Is there anything else that I could have asked that you, that I didn't and you'd like to tell her now? Oh, well, she would like to thank you because, because of your angelic energy and it's important for you in your pro in that you're teaching people that's a way to spread your energy this is so important i mean this is we just have to go to a much, much deeper level of healing. Mm -hmm. And as this information goes out into the world, how does it affect others? Well, like, just like light, the more light, the more light. Mm -hmm. And the, like the more light dissolves even, as there are more lights, it dissolves even, it, it's, um, exponential mm -hmm. and uh, and it will be exponential in numbers and in depth of healing very good thank you yeah is there anything else you would like to tell Lori today hmm well, Jesus says, thank you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and that there is, there is so much beautiful energy to tap into right here on earth that it's getting, that the energy of the planet, even though there's a lot of, chaos and challenges that there is more and more beauty to connect into and that it's really it's it's a beautiful energy that we can that anyone who wants to attain they can get there very good yeah very good is there anything else that you would like to tell me or Lori or anyone else? Or are we complete? Mm. That there is just, oh my gosh, there's so many angels around you. <laughs> it's like a flock. Of mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess they're my entourage. Yeah, it's quite beautiful. thank them all. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Are we complete? 
just for now. Thank you. Will we be meeting again? Definitely. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Wow. Mm. Look at you with all these crystals. Mm. Mm -hmm. How do you feel, my dear? Let me switch okay. them up with some shungite and let's get you grounded. Okay. How do you feel? Well. Okay. <laughs> you remember everything? Mm hmm Yeah? So? This is pretty, pretty present. Mm-hmm. What mm -hmm. a different experience, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it got really good at the end. Even <laughs> got the energy got better, better and, and better. Right? Yeah, like more and more positive. Yeah, and expansive and um, yeah. Feel good. Mm. Yeah, it was really great energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like all the angels came flooding in like butterflies and just. Yeah, and it just felt more like. Yeah, all the great energy right on mm -hmm. Earth, not yeah. just mm -hmm. in the cosmos. Yeah, where to, not like you have to escape to mm -hmm. the up there to get. Yeah, to, it's here. It's here. Mm -hmm. So, how does yeah. that change your perspective now? Well, you see, my last session, mm -hmm. I was told, "Your life isn't a punishment; it's mm -hmm. an assignment." Mm -hmm. But for all my life. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like, okay, well, it's an assignment, but it's it's a joyful mm -hmm. assignment. Mm -hmm. Different, isn't it? Yeah. So you have more insight. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So is this something you want to share with others? <laughs> I don't know. How does my hair look? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can edit it a little bit. Yeah, we can do some editing. Okay. Of course. Yeah. How long do you think the session was? Oh, How did it feel to you? Maybe an hour? Mm -hmm. We're right now on an hour and 54 minutes. Okay. We got a lot done. Mm. Yeah. You see how we didn't need to go to all those past lives. We just need a little snippets of it. Yeah. We just yeah. need to go. Yeah. Just get the, the, yeah. the idea as to what it was and didn't have to go reliving all of that stuff. Yeah. However, just, no. just going back kind of like yeah. figuring out what it was and how yeah. it affected you and moving on. Yeah. Quite a difference. Mm-hmm. Nice. How's your body feel? Mm. Well... I know a lot happened, so I I think it's going to take me a while to, it's almost, I just have to. Well, it's your intention, remember? I mean, if it's yeah. what you say you, it's going to happen. If you tell your innate, hey, yeah. we're good. This yeah. is going to be perfect. I'm feeling great. Now, if you tell your innate, oh, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. Right, okay. So you are, you are the goddess of this, yeah. of this temple. What do you tell well, I'm telling my Nate that we are so thankful so much got cleared out. Yeah. And we are going to be a much lighter, brighter being. You're going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And multicolored. Yeah. Isn't that wild? I, I like the multicolored. That was great. That was yeah. beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah. This is good. This is good. So, how was it for you? Um, just... Uh, how do I put it into words? Um, well, it's just such a beautiful uh, journey yeah. in all the, all ways, yeah. even the difficult ways. Because yeah. in the difficult places, you your mind still knows that you're doing this to get healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really so it's wonderful, even if it feels painful or yeah. um, disturbing in the moment. You're part of your your mind or soul knows that you're doing this to get more healing so mm -hmm. and then when you get to the places that are really beautiful just oh, totally beautiful that was, that, that's I really, really like wonderful that. so yeah we did a lot today and um what's great about your experience is that you have experienced other hypnosis sessions mm -hmm. so you were able to get a lot of the stuff out of the way mm -hmm. do you think that was helpful for you oh yeah and i had heard other people that you would 
-hmm. worked on say yes. that um, every hypnosis session you go deeper, you do yes. more. And so yeah, like the first session I just cleaned out a top layer of yes. stuff and yes. then this session got so much deeper mm -hmm. and hopefully there's... So what was the difference? How did, how did you feel the difference between um, the other session that you did and this one? Because that one you said you went to a lot of past lives, right? Mm -hmm. This, I would say I f was more visceral in mm -hmm. terms of the actual healing work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the energy and yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And now you do energy work too. Mm -hmm. Would you tell everybody what it is that you do? Yes. So, um, well, I call it interdimensional energy healing. Uh -huh. And it's really a combination of Reiki, mm -hmm. uh, hands on, if people are comfortable with that, and shamanic journeying and spiritual counseling. And so it's combining all those different activities. A lot of modalities. Yeah. A lot of modalities. Yeah. And so how are you going to use this now? How do you envision it? Because you have a class coming up in a few months where you're going to learn hypnosis mm -hmm. from Antonio Sanjo. And uh, we're going to meet again mm -hmm. in September. And how do you feel that this, this has helped you to prepare for that class and for your your uh, new journey. Yeah. Well, um, the more I heal myself, I, like any healer, the more we can be available for others. Yes. And uh, as Alba go, gets in sync and works journeys with the person in the session, um, the, that this will we'll be able to do this even more and more yes. with people. Yes. So it will bring even more powerful healing. So you've yeah. noticed that you can now use hypnosis to help others and be both connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rather than you doing it by yourself. Yes. yes. And having them just sit there and do right. nothing. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. So how can people get a hold of you? Tell people how to how to find you if they want to get a session with you. Yeah, well just send me a telepathic signal. No. <laughs> But you can also use your uh, the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so tell them your website so they can um, get a hold yes, of you. Yes, it's um my practice is called Stargate Garden Healing Center. So www.stargategarden.com, and I'm in um, the Portland area. Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's a Portland on the other yes. side. But you know, Portland, Maine is the original Portland, mm -hmm. not Portland, Oregon. <laughs> and but. right now we are in Portland, Maine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I traveled. This is my first stop on a, a few stops. I'm, I'm going to be taking train trip all the way down back to Florida, yeah. beginning in Portland and going way down. So um, this was not a, quite a nice journey we had today. Yes. And next trip. Hopefully, Alba, you'll be able to stay longer yes, yes. and experience more Absolutely. of the Costa Maine. That's, yeah. that's right, because yeah. I'm only here for a day, yeah. and I'm leaving tomorrow morning. So, yes. yes. So, and it's, it's so amazing when Alba comes to you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's a different so experience, sweet. isn't it? Yeah. It's a different experience. Yes, she I'm, works so hard. So. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, you're, just, you're just great. So if you would like a session with me, you will have to go to my website, albaweinman.com. Go to my out-of-town page and click on the bottom. There's a link there that says how to subscribe to my newsletter. Now, my newsletter comes out about once a month, no date or time. We just send it out whenever we're ready, and you will get a, an email with where I'm going to be. I could be in Miami, where my office is, or I could be traveling around the world. Once you get that newsletter, you need to click on that immediately. My calendar will come up. If there's a date and time there, click on it. You've got the session. If not, it's been booked, and they book very quickly. Is that how you got it? Uh, yes. My hand was shaking when the <laughs> email come up, came up to press it as fast as I could. And, folks, please, this is such an amazing um, uh, experience, and everyone on the planet uh, should be jumping into this. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching this session. It was beautiful, and uh, I hope I get to meet you sometime soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> Not gonna be happy. Yes, that's my favorite part of the whole uh, YouTube video. <laughs>